자, 벌써 1월 1일이 지나고 1월 2일이 시작됐습니다. 어? 2시 30분이 막 지났는데 연말 되면 어, 새 결심 영어로 이제 resolution 이런 그런데 마침내가 뉴욕 타임즈에 2년 전에 1년 2020 2022년에 1월 4일자 뉴욕 타임즈 스크랩 해놓은 거에 마침 resolution에 관한 글이 있는데 미국의 목사님이 쓰신 글인데 쭉 한번 레졸루션이 어떤 의미가 있어야 하는 것인가 목사님이 쓰신 글인데 이게 뉴욕타임즈의 1월 2022년 어 1월 4일에 나왔던 글입니다 제가 한번 쫙 읽습니다 레졸루션이 어떤 의미인가 Tish Harrison Warren Resolutions that are good for the soul Resolutions that are good for the soul January 4th, 2022 I accomplished 0% of my New Year's resolution last year I am obviously no sage of discipline. But I'd argue that the chief value of resolution is not found in our success or failure at keeping them. Instead, they help us reflect on what our lives are like. What you would like them to be like and what practices might have bridged the difference. There is goodness then in the very process of making resolution. There is hope in the idea that we can change, that we can keep growing, learning and trying new things. This hope of renewal is the point of resolution for me. For 2022, I became curious about what resolutions I might adopt that would help my soul. The practice of a spiritual resolution is not new. In the 18th century, Jonathan Edwards, known for his fiery sermons, and is mentioned in Hamilton as the Aaron Burr's grandfather, the fire and the brimstone a preacher, 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 made a list of spiritual resolution and reviewed them weekly. They began being sensible that I am unable to do anything without God's help. I do humbly entreated him by his grace to enable me to keep this resolution. So with Edward's habit, habit and prayer as my own, I asked for help in thinking about resolution that would benefit our souls as individuals or that would help the soul of our nation and the world. I asked friends who are pastors, writers, scholars, and spiritual leaders to offer suggested resolutions for 2022. Here was some of the many responses I received. Take time to reflect. I took the advice to keep a pandemic journal and this now hundreds of handwritten pages and it's the single best thing I've done over the last two years. I want to add to this daily uh, journaling a practice time of monthly seasonal annual reflection. 
this might simply be asking myself as I look over my calendar, my project list, my daily journal, what's working, what's not, and why. Also a, a habit called the face and surprised by paradox. Plant seed, plant seed of humility. Make it a bi-monthly goal to engage in a conversation with one who is not part of your political, religious, or cultural community with the intention of learning something from them. Then watch humility grow, which is a forgotten yet desperately needed virtue in our age of polarization and the cancellation. Pauline, a historian of Christianity at Vanderbilt University, care for the earth in small ways. Find one or two small ways to care more faithfully for creation between last January's winter storm and the hurricanes in November. Climate change continued to disrupt and destroy lives. I want to love my neighbor by being conscious about my use and consumption of the planet. If everyone does something, those small things add up to big things. Freelance writer and co-host of the podcast, Melanated Face. Think about the third person. Think about the third person. Every time we act, our actions affect more people than we actually see. One of the hallmarks of Catholic social teaching is solidarity, recognizing that we are all connected as human beings and that our own well-being is tied up with the well-being of others. One small way to leave that out is to pause before taking a particular action to think about the third person who will be affected by it. So, for instance, if you send an angry email to someone, you will be affected by it first, and the person you send it to will be affected by it second. But who will be next? That person's spouse, their child, uh, what will they impact the be? Is it worth it? If we all thought a little more about the child person, we would likely be more careful <coughs> with how we treat each other. The Reverend <coughs> Jonathan uh, Michigan, Catholic priest and writer, engage with the upscreen world first off screen every morning whenever wherever i am in the world i go outside before i look at the screen i've managed to do this consistently for about four years often i go outside just for a few moments but as soon as i step outside I not only find my sense coming alive, I also find myself feeling smaller, a creature in the midst of creation, rather than the small god of a tiny glowing world. It's been kind of ridiculously transformative, ridiculously that is given how simple this discipline is. I've found myself far more grateful, far less anxious, and far less interested in whatever my screens have to tell me that day. Also, for the first time in my life, I consistently know the praise of the moon, 
which doesn't seem like such a small thing. Andy Crouch, author of the TechWise family, make a plan to seek racial justice and the healing. Write a racial justice action plan. The difference between a dream and a goal is uh, the plan. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream that we love to reference. But what is our plan to achieve that dream? I'm sitting down with my whole family to make this plan using the ARC of racial justice as a model. We are going to be intentional about the building our awareness, forging relationship with a variety of people, and the committing to working on a systemic level to fight racism, defying the dehumanizing effects of racism is good for our neighbor and our own souls. Gemma Tisby, historian and author of the Carlab Compromise and How to Fight the Racism. Take stock of your life every week. Take stock of your life every week. John Newton, the 18th century Anglican cleric, cleric, and uh, the abolitionist, abolitionist, had the uh, Saturday at 6 p.m. exercise to help him get ready for Sunday. I want to do something like it myself. It had three parts. The first part was to make two lists all the mercies, blessings, and the good things to be thankful for that had happened to him that week, and second, a list of sins, of omission and commission, omission and commissions. He had committed against others and God. The second part was to reflect on the discrepancies between God's goodness to him and his behavior. This helped him get a refreshed joy in God's free, undeserved, undeserved grace. Of course, this depended on his grasp of the gospel that we are saved by Jesus' works, not ours, without that uh, this uh, the discrepancy would drive you into the ground. The third part was uh, rededication of life, a refreshing and the deepening of our commitment to God and the God's uh, the promise. Uh, Tim Keller, pastor and the theologian, theologian, keep the Sabbath. In 20, keep the Sabbath. In 2020, I like the rest of the world was forced into rest. Everything shut down, so in many ways, I didn't have a choice. But then in the summer of 2021, many of the events and activities picked up, picked up. It felt like that we were catching up on lost time and when full speed ahead. As a result, rest has been elusive, elusive. But this fast paced, fast paced, nonstop work, nonstop work, and activity isn't the way humans are made. I need rest. That's how God created us. The Bible instructs us to rest and ultimately rest in Jesus. So for 2022, I intend to keep the Sabbath. I'll uh, spend one day each week resting from all forms of work. It will be an act of worship and a declaration of my need 
uh, for the Lord. Also, I need the rest. Tri uh, Trillia Newbell, speaker and actor, a speaker and author of several books, including God's Very Good Idea. Encourage the people around the you. Encourage the people around you. My resolution is to look for an opportunity, look for an opportunity every day to give encouragement to someone in my past, whether that uh, be a family member, a colleague, a cashier, or a child. Giving encouragement benefits my well-being too. Lorena Williamson, also of colorful and the celebration place. Pray for political leaders, especially ones you don't like. Think about our political leaders and pray for the ones you don't like, but make them prayers some gratitude for the things they do well. For the people whose lives they help improve, for the ways they contribute to human uh, flourish, flourishing. And if you uh, can't come up with and come up with anything, ask yourself if it's because they needed to change or because you, you needed to change, John. Enaju, professor of law and religion at Washington University in St. Louis and also of competence pluralism. I want to try something in this list that is hard for me and to try something that fills me with hope and the possibility as you begin 2022. These friends inspire me and dare me to believe that things can be made new, even me, even us. Yeah, Tish Harrison Warren is a priest in the Anglican Church in North America and also a prayer in the night for those who walk or watch or weep. 목사님 있으신 레졸루션에 관한 2022년 1월 4일자 뉴욕타임즈 오. 하, 이게 이제 보통 사람이 한 글이 아니고 목사님이라 특히 전부 책을 쓰셨거나 목사님이거나 그런 분들의 글을 인용했네 아하 좋습니다. 레졸루션에 관한 글을 처음으로 한번 읽어봤습니다.